Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor here in Greenville. And if you need a realtor in Greenville or elsewhere, you can find all my contact information in the show notes. If you're a realtor looking to join a team, uh, I have a small team that I uh, co-team lead, and I would be happy to discuss with you about joining our team. So please let me know. Contact info in the show notes. Also in the show notes, Piper Insurance Group. They are our sponsor for this episode. Uh, they can help you with home, auto, and umbrella insurance. They're an independent insurance agency, so they can quote multiple different companies and bring you back the best possible quote. Licensed in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. So basically our whole little pocket here of, uh, of the Southeast. Um, and they can help you out with investment properties as well. Commercial, fix and flips, ground up new construction, all that good stuff. They are in the show notes as well. Uh, and please, if you do none of those things, at the very least, please leave a review. If you're if you're listening to this on Apple, you can leave a review. Um, you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. I will respond if it's a thoughtful comment. I can assure you, I will. I don't get a whole lot of them, so I will respond. Um, so I'd appreciate if you guys could do those things. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone, right? I'm uh, going to release this before Thanksgiving. I'm guessing probably the vast majority of my listeners will listen after Thanksgiving. Um, so um, if you're listening prior to Thanksgiving, I hope you have a good one. If you're listening post Thanksgiving, I hope it was a good one and that you didn't blow all your money on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, but uh, every year, at least for the past few years, I've done a thankfulness episode. And this year is no different. Definitely something that I wanted to to get in for the year 2024. But if I'm going to be completely honest, this has actually been an extremely challenging year for me personally. Probably the hardest year that I have personally had since 2020, which was the COVID year, but also the year I got diagnosed with epilepsy and wasn't allowed to drive for six months, uh, which is challenging for a realtor. My wife was driving me to showings, which was weird and kind of embarrassing. Um, but uh, it's it's been a tough year. There's just been a lot of personal stuff lingering in the background constantly, in addition to the market being challenging, various transactions being challenging. I mean, feels like every transaction has been hard, like even the layups have been hard. Um, big changes obviously happening in the real estate world that completely shook up our industry, complicated the job, et cetera. It's just been really for, I think, for a lot of realtors, this has been a very, very hard year. Um, and uh, it's been no exception for me. And I'm not looking to boohoo, you know, cry on someone's shoulder, but I'm just being honest. Um, and that was that was where when I went into preparing for this episode, that was immediately where my headspace went was just like, man, this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna have to put in some work to try to uh, to try to come up with uh, ten things to be thankful for. Um, but uh, it actually wasn't that hard. And and you know, as I've already said, I've done this now for for several years where I discuss what I'm thankful for with Greenville, real estate generally, uh, generally being the primary topics of my thankfulness. Um, and uh, I felt like I needed to do this exercise more this year than in the past because of the sort of year that it's been. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, and what I learned from from going through this and, and from finding that it really wasn't that hard uh, for me to come up with with 10 things to be thankful for, it's just easy to forget all the good things that have happened when our brains are pre-wired to focus on the bad. Um, that's just the way we are. That's, you know, when when we, we feel a threat, when we feel uh, icky, our brains just focus on that, double down on that. Um, there's a lot of psychology behind that that I won't get into. Um, but um, but that's the reality of the situation. So sometimes we just have to reset and just list out what we're thankful for. And I, I think that this year is going to be a little more biographical uh, than other years, a little more focus on stuff going on in in my actual life, uh, somewhat as it pertains to real estate. Because like I said, there was a lot that went on in my life that was challenging this year. And so to combat that, um, I specifically focused my headspace around what the things were that happened that were positives for me. So let's just jump right in. I don't like this episode to be super long. Um, but I do like to to do this episode. There are some people that tell me that this is their favorite episode of the year, so I always want to make sure that I that I get this out to everyone. Um, so in no particular order, number one on my list, and I already said there's 10 things on here, I got my first podcast sponsor this year, and I was able to use that money. And of course, it was Piper Insurance Group, as I've already referenced. Um, I was able to use the money that Piper Insurance Group uh, paid to be a sponsor for this podcast 
to help someone battling cancer. I, I committed all of that uh, to helping a friend of mine who is battling cancer. I don't mean this as a humble brag at all, just to be clear, okay? What I mean by this, the reason why I bring this up rather than you know trying to pat myself on the back, oh, I did this, I'm so great. No, 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 you guys did this. There would be no sponsorship if it wasn't for you guys, my listeners. If I was just shouting into the void and nobody was listening to this content, there would be no sponsorship. And so thank you to you guys. Thank you to Piper Insurance Group. I'm I'm very grateful that I got a sponsor. I'd love to get more at some point, um, but it's not something I'm actively pursuing um, at this time. I'm not, you know, sending out a gazillion emails. I don't have time to, you know, find sponsors. Uh, Piper was was a great option because they're local. I I have a bunch of policies with them. Uh, Stephen Piper is a listener of the show, so it just made sense. It was just a good fit, um, and I appreciate you guys for helping make that happen. Uh, number two. Uh, the Greenville real estate market stayed stable during a time of tremendous upheaval. I've already referenced. I mean, this year was crazy, right? We had several, several things that in a normal year would be a complete death knell to the real estate industry. High rates, uh, presidential election, and and a crazy one at that, right? Assassination attempts, a, a presidential candidate uh, stepping down without a primary to replace him, like all sorts of stuff. Um, and then in addition to that, I've already referenced, you know, we had all these changes that happened. We've had so many different, um, forms, contracts that were the language has changed. We've had to go through all sorts of classes. Uh, our compensation model has completely changed for realtors. Um, some people are dropping out of the industry because of that. And at the end of the day, has it been a good year for real estate in Greenville? No, no, it really hasn't. Uh, like, let's just be honest. Uh, but the market has stayed stable. We haven't seen it crater like it has in some other parts of the country. And for that, I'm grateful. That is not a small thing, right? I could be sitting here like without any business. And that's not the case. In fact, I'm listing two homes later today. Um, so that's something that I I think, and and of course, I'm, I'm recording this well before Thanksgiving because I will be with my in-laws uh, at my in-laws on Thanksgiving um, so, um, anyway, the, I'm, I'm grateful that the market has stayed stable. My business has not been as good as I wish it would have been, but it has also been stable. And, and for that, I'm grateful during a time of great upheaval. Um, number three, I became the, the co-team leader of the Morgan group, which is the team I've been on since I entered real estate. And that was really a great honor for me and something that I'm immensely thankful for. It's not something I've, we've gone super public with, but I've taught, I told you guys on the show, um, and, uh, that's something that for me personally was, was a, a huge stepping stone, right? Um, I've always wanted to, uh, I, I've always enjoyed mentoring people. I've always enjoyed, um, trying to help people with, with training and just become better versions of themselves. And I think that this is going to give me a great opportunity. Um, obviously we need to, to grow the team first and foremost. So if you know people that, might be a good fit to to join a small real estate team. Uh, please let me know. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just grateful um, that I have this opportunity, this worked out, um, that the person who founded the team, uh, Bob Morgan, that he was gracious enough to to bring me in uh, as uh, basically an, an equal with him on the team that he founded and built. Um, and I'm I'm just super grateful for that. And that's uh, that's something that I'm I'm really excited. 2025 and beyond, uh, what that means for for me, for my business, and uh, for those that join the team uh, moving forward. <clears throat> Number four, um, mortgage rates peaked and then came back down a little. I'm very grateful for that, right? Mortgage rates hit in the 8% range per Mortgage News Daily at one point, and now they're back down in the 7%, uh, low, right around 7% range. 7% um, is really rough. 8%, like if they were at 8% right now, I, I don't think anyone would be buying anything. So the fact that they did peak, they did come back down, um, that is that is tremendously huge, right? I, I did a, an episode uh, back in September where we I looked at, I analyzed a ton of data um, going into the episode and then broke it down for you guys, where I looked at the 30-year fixed rate mortgage average uh, per the Mortgage News Daily Composite and then compared it to the unemployment rate. Basically, if you add those two numbers together, 
Um, if it's over 11, that's really bad for the housing market. Well, it is over 11, right? Unemployment, which is a lagging number, but unemployment currently, the best number we have, 4.1. Mortgage rates around 7. Um, that is over 11, right? And if we hit 11.45, that is a truly catastrophic. That's usually when we see a major housing market recession, um, much worse than what we've currently experienced. We haven't hit that yet. Um, we were at 11.18 yesterday uh, when I looked. And hopefully by the time you guys are listening to this, hopefully um, mortgage rates will have mediated, uh, not mediated, hopefully they will have moderated, that's the word I'm looking for, moderated and perhaps that, that number will come below 11, perhaps mortgage rates will be in the high sixes by that point because they're just kind of going up and down, market's doing weird things. Um, but the main thing I'm happy about is that we're not at that eight range. We did come off of that number um, because if if it wasn't for that, the, the market would be in pretty bad shape right now. Uh, number five, um, my mom, again, I said there would be more personal things in here. My mom now lives less than 10 minutes from me. And um, that was a a big thing. It was a it was a, something that, you know, was a long time in coming. She had said and, and my dad, when he was still alive, um, you know, for years that they were going to move to Greenville. Um, it finally happened this year. Unfortunately, my dad passed away last year, so um, so he wasn't able to see the promised land, as it were. Um, but um, but he's looking at us from above, and um, and now you know I've got my mom less than ten minutes from me, and and it's nice. It's nice to just you know be able to to go on a walk together, do a meal together, or or this or that. Uh, first time since I graduated college that I've lived near my mom. Um, so, uh, so I think that that's great. And by the way, she is a residential cleaner. She, and, and she can also do things like churches as well, although it's not a, been a big part of her business in the past. Uh, but she's cleaning for a ton of agents and clients right now. And if you need a cleaner, please let me know, um, my contact info in the show notes. I'd be happy to connect you with her. Number six, Greenville wasn't hit as hard by Helene as it could have been. Okay. And listen, Greenville was hit pretty hard. Um, in fact, it, it's it's interesting. I uh, I I went to a uh, a session recently that uh, was led by someone that was not from Greenville, and he said something to the effect of, "You guys weren't weren't thankfully hit by the hurricane," and everyone just kind of looked around like uh, we were without power for multiple weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, he he stepped right into a trap. He didn't realize people didn't realize that Greenville was hit because so much focus was on Western North Carolina. Um, but that's because Western North Carolina was hit insanely hard, and other parts of uh, uh, in Helene's path were hit way worse. Um, some parts with gusts of wind a uh, hundred mile per hour and over. Greenville did not have that, and for that, I'm immensely grateful. Right. We, you know, we we did have uh, immense loss of of property. People now having to fight insurance claims, um, people without power for multiple weeks, as I already referenced, a lot of things like that. Um, a, a lot of people were hit very hard by the storm, but it wasn't a devastating storm. I don't know anyone that was injured. I don't know anyone that was killed um, as a result of Helene, and um, and all of my clients that were affected. Um, it did hurt us, right? It I, I, you know, two months ago, I or, or after Helene, I discussed, you know, I don't know if this is going to just eliminate one to two months of real estate business from the real estate economy for the year in Greenville, or if it's going to cause a backlog. Well, it's looking like it's it's just eliminating those one to two months, which which is kind of lousy because it was already kind of a, a down year anyway. Um, but uh, but imagine how much worse it could have been had we gotten hit with those 100 mile per hour wind gusts that Western North Carolina uh, got hit with. And so I'm particularly grateful that, that that didn't happen. I live in a basement home. I know people that have basement homes that got flooded. Mine did not. Even though I've got a creek right on my lot, like, you know, like 100 feet away from my house. Um, and that creek sits in a floodplain. And that water um, did not it entered my garage, which my garage is between the creek and uh, and my house, and uh, and it came into my garage and it essentially stopped there, and uh, and so I'm extremely grateful for that. <clears throat> which leads to point number seven: my home wasn't damaged despite being near a floodplain, right? And we got 
the winds. Um, we and I have huge trees on my lot. I've got about one and a half acres, um, massive, massive trees. Um, but only one tree fell. It was a tree in the far back of my lot that was termite infested. And um, and you know, it fell, wasn't a big deal. Um, didn't didn't impact my yard using my yard as all like I said, all the way in the back, didn't impact my house. Uh, didn't have any obvious wind damage. Uh, sometimes I go on the roof. You know, I used to be an insurance adjuster, so I can go on the roof and identify wind damage. I didn't even bother because I could see from ground level. If you're an insurance adjuster listening to this, you're probably like, you can't see anything from ground level. Yeah, you can. You you can, you can see some stuff from ground level. You can't see the full picture. Um, but I saw enough from ground level to know that I don't even need to get, get on that roof. The roof is doing okay. We didn't even have wind driven rain, right? That's a that's another thing. Your roof can be perfectly fine. You can have rain enter it through the eaves. Um, and that's uh wind driven rain. Didn't even have that. So I'm very grateful. My house was not damaged because I was not prepared for that storm. I was completely checked out. I have never had uh, uh we've never had in the time that I've lived in Greenville a storm come up from the Gulf and impact us in that way. It, you know, the the worst storms that we've had have always come from the Atlantic during the time that I've lived in Greenville which is 20 years now. So um, it, it was completely not on my radar that a Gulf storm could completely uh, incapacitate Greenville. Uh, but that happened. And, um, and you know, I woke up the, the day of the storm, saw that it had shifted and, and was like basically right over my house. And I didn't even really think about it. I didn't think. Maybe I should go in my basement to see if it's flooded. I just was completely, and and I'm a big weather guy too. I was completely checked out. I just had no idea. I'd been very busy that week. Uh, I was focused on some other things, and um, and so I'm I'm extremely grateful because I was completely caught with my pants down, completely caught unprepared, and thankfully ended up uh, not being a problem for my house specifically. Uh, number eight, um, I was able to take on leadership positions this year that I wasn't even pursuing, uh, but that allowed me to give back to Greenville and the real estate industry as a whole. So I now chair the uh, Realtor Political Action Committee here in Greenville. I've referenced that a few times. Um, I've been on that committee since 2020, um, and I've, I've had a lot of fun in that committee. We do, we, we really tried to, to push for private property rights. There's nobody, nobody, I'm, I'm telling you, no independent organization that's pushing for property, private property rights in Greenville besides uh, our RPAC committee. Like that's the reality of the situation. Um, and that very much excites me. I'm, I'm a big rights guy. Um, and so to be able to chair that committee um, has been a lot of fun for me this year. I'm also this year, um, I well, technically last year, but this year is my first full year on the uh, South Carolina uh, Realtors Legislative Committee, which is Kind of the same thing, um, but on the state level, right? And I don't chair that committee. I'm just I'm just a part of that committee, um, and uh, and so that's another way that you know I can give back to the state. Can we can we're constantly? I mean, the amount of stuff that you guys, if if you truly knew what was happening at the state level, you'd probably be appalled um, because there there is just trampling of rights left and right on the state level. And again, we're able to advocate for private property rights and try to ensure that uh, it's on our legislators minds that, hey, people need housing, they need the flexibility to use their property how they want, and they need to be able to do all this affordably in so in so far as uh, it, as it's possible and, the, and that the market allows. And um, in our legislature, quite frankly, a lot of them wouldn't care uh, if they weren't being constantly having to be constantly educated by outside groups, and we're one of the main groups doing that on the state level. Um, I'm also on the this year the and I was just sworn in uh, to the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors Board of Directors, um, and that was something I never asked for. Um, I was actually in Mexico when I um, uh, over uh, New Year's when I received a call from the current uh, president of the uh, of the board, and. Um, and, you know, just out of the blue, she asked me if if I wanted to join the board. And it was like, uh, I was not prepared for this question. Um, and I'm here on a beach in Mexico and I might drop this call. But sure, why not? You know, it's another way to give back. 
And little did I know that this would be probably the most chaotic time to join a realtor association board because uh, as I've already said, the National Association of Realtors lost a, well, I didn't directly say this, but we've talked about this in the past. They lost a massive lawsuit this year and that created huge ripples down to the South Carolina Association of Realtors and the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors that resulted in tons of changes. Um, in fact, we had a whole, um, from the time that I recorded this a week ago, we had this whole uh, brainstorming session on what kind of value can we give back to our membership um, you know, e even if perhaps they don't see the value, right? Or or if the main thing that they find to be the value no longer is the value of being a part of the Association of Realtors. Um, and um and so it's just been what what an interesting time to to join that board when it's kind of a crisis time. And um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm gonna be serving a, a two-year term and uh from from now moving forward the next couple of years. Um, I had been in an in an interim term um, from uh, the starting with the new year, um, but uh, I'm I'm excited to see you know how I grow in that role and how I'm able to contribute in that role over the years, um, and that leads right into number nine, which is uh, from a real estate standpoint, I'm grateful for the leadership at the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors, at the South Carolina Association, and the National Association. Listen, they're getting a, a lot of negative press right now. In fact. As I'm recording this, um, yesterday, the New York Times just published a, a gnarly article about the National Association of Realtors, about their finances and extravagant spending and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a hit piece. I'm, I'm thinking it was probably an inside job by someone that was recently let go or perhaps fired from National Association of Realtors. Um, but the reality is that um, even though they lost a lawsuit that they should have won, um, I'm not, it, it's hard to know exactly how much of that was their fault because the lawsuit was kind of rigged in a lot of ways, which I'm not going to get into here. Um, and uh, it, it is what it is. I think the leadership that's in place now um, is doing a good job. And I particularly am impressed by the local leadership here in Greenville and in the state of South Carolina. Um, I know that leadership much more and they have done a great job because I mean they steer the ship for the the real estate market, right? People don't people don't know how much is happening behind the scenes. And even if you're not using a realtor, right? Even if let's say you're a big for sale by owner person, which probably nobody listening to this podcast is, um, but let's say you're a big for sale by owner person, um, you don't like to use realtors. Maybe you're an investor that you know you you do your own direct mail programs uh, so that you don't have to use a buyer agent. Um, just know that even if you're not using agents, the the real estate market is still being worked and still being moved by professional real estate organizations. That's just how it works uh, in, in a variety of ways. Um, and so all that leadership, that trickles down to everyone and that affects the entire market. Number 10, Last but not least, I actually saved the best for last, is that my clients were amazing this year, despite the insanity of the year. I mean, this was a stressful year for buyers and sellers. Incredibly stressful. And yet, my clients were great. Um, we we had some hard conversations at different times. Um, we had some some challenging, challenging situations, challenging talks, homes that went under contract, fell out from being under contract, went back under contract, fell out again, kept doing this back and forth over and over again. Homes that wouldn't get any showings. Um, buyers that couldn't find anything because rates uh, in their price range because rates were so high. So many different things. And yet, in all of that, my clients uh, were fantastic. And any of my clients, past, future, present, listening to this, just know that I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all of my listeners. I've already said that. Uh, in point number one with my uh, sponsorship uh, uh, part of this that I talked about. But I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys. If you're listening, great. Watching on YouTube, great. If you're a client that's not listening, you're still getting a little bit of a shout out here. So thank you to each and every one of you guys. And I hope that you guys have a lot to be thankful for. I encourage you to take some time to do this sort of exercise as well. Just come up with 10 things. Um, it might be easier than you think once you start rolling with the 10 things. This was 10 things just all about 
more or less all about real estate for me. I didn't even get, you know, even though it was more personal than normal, I didn't get into anything personal. I didn't get into anything with, with my family besides my mom moving here. I didn't get into anything with, you know, all sorts of, of other things um, going on in my life that I could be thankful for. So there is so much uh, that we can be thankful for, so many ways that, that we are, have been, and will be blessed. And, and I hope that you guys feel that, that you feel that this year, uh, despite the, the challenging year that it's been, and that uh, you have, you know, to con uh, continually the ability to see the light ahead at the end of the tunnel, even when things are dark. So thank you guys for listening. A lot to be thankful for. I hope you have or had a great Thanksgiving. Please like, rate, review, subscribe. Please contact me if you need a realtor. Please contact Piper Insurance Group if you need an insurance agent. And we will talk again next time.